Hi, this is Walter Wiese for Yellowstone Country Fly Fishing and Parks Fly Shop with my fly tying video for March 18th, 2020. Uh, today what I'm doing is a fly called a butt crack betis and while it's, you know, it's called a betis nymph, um, obviously, it uh, really is kind of a, in the same ballpark role as something like a WD-40 where it goes for a small mayfly or a midge. Uh, and, you know, not just betas mayflies. And this is by a guy named Dwayne Redford down in Colorado. And it's a good fly and really popular down there, but the only video of it is his. And uh, so I figured I'd, I'd do one of my own version. Uh, before I actually get started on the video here, I am going to go ahead and say uh, this is going to be a very good year to support, you know, your local fly shop, the destination fly shops that you go to, guides you like, really anyone in the tourism and hospitality industries, you know, once everything gets settled down with the virus. Um, I do think it's going to be several months before everything starts getting back to normal here, and uh, I've been told by some of my outfitters, um, you know, I work for myself, I work for Parks Fly Shop, I work for several other outfitters, and I've been told to expect a 50% reduction in income this year, and, uh, you know, looking at what's happening in Europe right now, I'm starting to wonder if that's not optimistic. Uh, my wife and I are operating under the assumption I will have essentially no income this year, you know, until I start... I don't know, trying to get a ditch digging job or something along with all the other fishing guides. So, you know, I do think that June, late June, July, August, um, well, frankly, if it's not settling down by then, we are in much deeper trouble than I think. But, uh, you know, I'm, I wouldn't be surprised if uh, it really isn't sometime in July before things start to settle. And uh, so if your funds and job and everything allow uh, this is going to be a good year to help uh, some of us in this field out regardless of where you go i mean uh, i'm not just talking about me i'm talking about everybody anyway that's enough pessimism i'll shut up and i'll tie the fly okay so my hook here is a uh, standard scud hook this one is actually i believe a kumoto yeah it's kumoto k2457 size 18 uh, which is identical to the old Dairiki 135. And then this is a size 18. You can tie this fly in 16 to 20, uh, maybe even 22. And then I have a bead on this one. This is a uh, 564-inch copper brass bead. Uh, the original pattern does not have a bead. Um, but uh, it's available. This, this pattern is available commercially from Montana Fly Company in uh, both beadhead and non beadhead versions. So, my thread here is 80 brown, and you can tie these you know, in the full rainbow of colors. But uh, brown is the original, um, maybe a slightly more reddish brown than this. And then the uh, purple is actually the other color it's available commercially in. Now, my tail uh, is going to be Coque de Leon, and I think this is medium pardo. And, you know, any speckled feather will work just fine. I'm going to strip off about a dozen fibers there, trim off the curlies, like so. And then I'm going to tie that in. It's still pretty close to the front here. And the reason for that is my, uh, as I do on a lot of my really small kind of thread or tinsel body nymphs, I'm going to create my taper mostly by how I tie in the, uh, the various materials here. Then my rib on the fly is going to be extra small copper wire in uh, this is uni wire and uh, I'm going to again tie that in right here at the front this is a really short piece I hope I don't run out of it um, and I'm going to wrap that back you know get it in touching turns here down the shank since that's the only place that I'm going to have or these wraps are the only wraps I'm going to be making on this portion of the hook shank didn't worry about that too much at the front yet because I'm, I am going to go back over that uh, and also I have a couple layers of thread there at the front already. But then I'm going to wrap back up, kind of go down the bend a little bit there, and then wrap back up like so. And then I'm going to grab that wire. Just kind of your standard open spiral wrap. Roughly six turns, somewhere in there. I, uh, I tend not to wor really worry too much about how many specific turns I get in wire. It's just, you know, give that suggestion of segmentation and flash. Now, the, the, this is where this fly gets weird. Um, my wing case is going to be white one millimeter foam. This is, you know, the same thickness as razor foam, uh, which is, I think, what Dwayne uses on the original. This one is actually, uh, I can't remember if I got this from Amazon or from Walmart, frankly. Um, 
but it's a you know a one mil rather than a two mil foam, and you really do need the thin stuff for this fly. Uh, you you do kind of have to hunt around for it if you're trying to buy foam that's this thin in a fly shop. Well, not really a fly shop. Fly shops that sell materials, we usually have it. Um, but if you're looking around in a craft store, you really do have to hunt around for the one mil. But what I did there is I took, you know, I cut a slip of that material, roughly, let's say, half a gape uh, in width, and then I trimmed a V-notch in it. And this is essentially, I think, to cut down on the amount of bulk where you tie it in, because if I cut these, you know, if I had two of these little slippers of foam just this, this size, um, I'd need twice the thread wraps essentially to get those secure. So what I'm going to do there, is I'm going to come in and I'm going to tie that on top of the hook shank, kind of right at the junction where I where that uh, that notch I cut meets the the place where I stopped cutting the notch. Hopefully that's that's not really very visible at all. Uh, but yeah, there you go. So I'm going to tie it in essentially right there on top of the hook shank. And you know you want the kind of the normal size uh, thorax on this fly. You know the uh, the good rule of thumb is to make your thorax and bead combine to be about half the length of the fly. So the abdomen is half, and then the uh, the uh, bead and thorax is about half. So then I'm going to go in essentially to the mid portion of that uh, that thread base where I tied in the foam there, and then my my wing or flash. I'm not really sure what it is. It, not really legs, because it's not right, not in the right spot. But that that tuft of flash sticking out the top of the fly there is going to be Lagerton flat braid in size mini, and you could use any sort of similar material that's sort of braided like this. In a pinch, I could would say you could also use a bunch of uh, crystal flash fibers. But just this is pearl, and he also or, uh, Dwayne Redford also uses root beer. Um, but I'm going to go in here and then just tie that in, kind of right in the middle of that. That's not where I want that. Right in the middle of that that uh, that thread base you made there. And so what I, I like to do there is just make a turn or two and then pull it snug like so. And a lot of times you may have seen that start to happen. Well, you may have seen this. You may, you'll certainly see it start to happen now. Um, you see how that's, that material is starting to fray. And that's what you want for the finished product. And so... Um, what I'll do here is I'm going to just leave that sit like that because that makes it easier to tie the rest of the fly. And then my thorax on this fly is going to be rusty brown ice dub. And uh, I'm going to show you kind of two packages of this material here. Um, hopefully this is visible. There's one. There's the other. I don't know how well this is going to show up in terms of the differences, but this kind of more um, drab color here is what I want. I've got multiple packages of this and they always come out slightly different dye lots, but opt for a little bit drabber. In fact, you could also um, mix in a little bit of like rusty brown acrylic to make things a little drabber. Um, you know, just some of some of the ice stub, it's, it's more copper colored and some of it's more kind of that drab golden brown and uh, that's what I want is a more drab kind of color. But anyway, I got that dubbed on there pretty roughly um, because there are no real legs on this fly. And I'm just going to create a thorax there around that um, that post. That's a little bit too raggedy there. And you notice there, when I saw that was really ragged, I just actually ripped some of that off um, and then redubbed it. And that's how I kind of quick and dirty tidy up the fly a little bit because I didn't want it quite that raggedy. But about like so. And then I'm going to take the, uh, the braided material there and just kind of pull it down between the two strands of the foam and then grab the tips of that foam. And you do want to leave yourself plenty of, uh, you know, cut a foam strip that's, that's long enough where you can actually get your fingers on it like that. So I'm going to kind of stretch that over the top of the fly and then one turn there to bind that in and then a couple more. And this has some similarity to an older fly called a pogo nymph. Um, the uh, the flash here is completely different, but the pogo nymph actually had uh, a foam shell back like that as well. And that is so little f foam on there. Um, you know, even if this was an unweighted fly, it wouldn't float it. It might retard the sink rate slightly, but that's that's simply not enough foam to to even really slow down the sink rate very much of a. Uh, much less a bead head, but a you know a heavy wire hook like that, and so that really is. You could substitute something for that if you wanted to, but anyway, I'm going to go ahead and whip finish that trim, and I'm going to come in here and 
clip that off about like so and then fray it out if it's not already frayed and that obviously was already pretty well frayed because I had a hard time tying it in but that is a butt crack betas um, you know it's kind of a midge slash mayfly you know not really sure what what uh, Dwayne Redford created that as I mean he calls it a butt crack betas but that sure looks like a midge to me um, something even something like a serendipity because that, that's not too distinct from a serendipity wing um, but it's a good combo, kind of small, attractor, mayfly, midge sort of pattern. And, uh, you know, I do actually have two trips this week supposedly still going on and, uh, might be my only trips of the season for a while. And that's why I'm tying this. I'm going to use these on the Spring Creeks, uh, tomorrow and Wednesday. Actually, today is Wednesday. So I will have used this fly the last couple days. Anyway, as always, thanks for watching and, uh, feel free to leave a comment below.